and I'll be very brief with this, I promise. But like one thing, ironically, it's uh, Proverbs 420, which I thought you would <laughs> like. <laughs> so if there's anything better. Perfect. But, Read um, it. Preach. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Oliver Anthony has done it again. He went over to the Joe Rogan podcast and said the most amazing things about God, talking about God's power to change and to change a man's life completely is something you need to see. If you don't know who Oliver Anthony is by now, you need to go check out the song Rich Man, North of Rich Man. Let me play a segment for you. Total control. Wanna know what you think. Wanna know what you do. And they don't think you know. But I know that you do. Yeah, this is Oliver Anthony for you, and the video has gone viral. This man's life has totally transformed. 50 million views in two weeks. That is ridiculous. Ah, uh, preach. Okay, just saying. So his video is definitely getting a lot of attention. He became famous overnight. Um, it's good to hear him. By the way, he rejected an $8 million deal. $8 million. Well, anyway, so with that being said, this man now is going around speaking about the Lord. He's not afraid of reading the Bible openly. He's not afraid of talking about his faith. This is good to see. And Joe Rogan now is being exposed to more Jesus by Oliver Anthony. I think the Lord loved Joe Rogan very much. He doesn't. He loves all of us, doesn't he? Joe Rogan over and over again is being exposed to the gospel. For those of you who don't know, he's not very friendly of Christians at all. Let me show you what Joe Rogan used to say about Christianity. The whole thing's so stupid. Just stop and think how f***ing stupid that is. You understand, mother because the New Testament is utter horse shit. Aren't you grown adults? Like, you guys are, you're into nonsense? So you're into nonsense. Is that what this is? Because this is, you're showing nonsense. If you think that the only way for a person to have ethics or an understanding of each other or compassion for each other is to rely on ancient myths that are easily scientifically disproven. That. Well, that's what Christianity is. Well, if you're going to call Catholicism a cult. It's a then. cult. Uh, I grew up in it. Okay. It's 100%. Um, it's just a cult with a billion people. There's many people that live their lives by these ridiculous ideologies that are illogical. Yeah, this is how Joe speaks about Christianity. But you know, what's amazing is that over and over again on his podcast, God is exposing him to Christians. He's exposing him to Christians and he is getting a different perspective. And every now and then he seems to want to listen. Every now and then he seems to have a little, a little come to Jesus moment. And then he backs down, going to do the same thing he's been doing. But here is the point. Oliver Anthony is going to speak some common sense to Joe's life right now. And I think it's good to hear this entire video. And I'm going to react and respond as we get into this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Listen, support the channel as well. And go over to our store. All right? Because YouTube hasn't been very friendly to your boy. <laughs> it's been demonetizing me over and over again, shadow banning my video. And the more I talk about God, the more I talk about Jesus, the more I talk about anything that has to do with politics and show a Christian perspective on these things, YouTube has been slapping me. This is just wrong. Over and over again, but it's all good. You see my shirt? God is stronger than men. Let's get to the video. I don't know. I'm telling you, like, again, I'm not... I'm not anybody special and I'm certainly not here to preach to anybody, but just from coming from somebody who was just really, just in a really place, like, and I use that word like with discretion, but in this case it describes like where I was, like that guy found a lot of peace, like from this book and from, from looking at things in a different way. Yeah. From looking at things through the eyes well, yeah, of scripture. And I think for me, it was like, I had been in. You know, I'd been in church growing up, and I had been I had been exposed to all of that, but mm. I'd found a lot of um, a lot of theatrics and a lot of politics in church and in religion when I was younger, and so it just immediately turned me off to so it. So, if you can take us to like what was like the day you picked it up, what what was the feeling that you had, like what caused you to act, what what was it like when you did it? Yeah, I mean, I'd been reading it here and there, off and on, and I had for, like, off and on for a long time, like, because, I, again, I was introduced to it as a kid, but it was really just, like, um, I remember I'd went to the, I went to the ER for everything that was going on. I mean, I thought I was seriously going to die, like, I was having shooting pains up under my jaw, down mm -hmm. in my wrist, and my leg, like, just 
cardiovascular 101 symptoms. Of course, I'm 31. I had been like, I could run four miles without stopping, no problem. So like I knew my heart was strong, mm, but you I were just, just freaking out. Yeah, but I went and did that, and uh, I remember being in the truck after that, just like, and I just, yeah, I just had a breakdown moment. I was just cr- just crying and um, was just, just, I just felt hopeless, like, like almost the way a child feels hopeless when they, you know, like you can't find your parent or something, like a, like a four-year-old that can't find his parents or something. I was just like, just didn't have anything left in me, and um, I don't know, I just... Uh, I just decided like right then and there, I was like, I know I can't do this anymore. And, but I know, I know that I can, I know there's things that I need to do. And I just, I was just, just told God, I was like, just let me do it. Like, and I'll give all this shit up. I'll give up the weed and I'll quit getting drunk and I'll quit. Um, I'll quit being so angry about things and I'll just like, well, I'll just call it good. Whatever I've done up from, from, up until I was 30 or whatever, 31, like, I'll, we'll just call that good and I'll start over again and um, I'll make him the focus and not me. And I just tried to tried to let my, let my ego and everything that I was just let that go and just focus on. Because obviously, like, it's not just me. I've seen it with even other people I know and I see it with celebrities and everything, but I don't know. I just feel like um, – we're in such a weird place right now in the world. That- Quickly, this is what we're talking about when it comes to God's way in working in the human's heart in a very mysterious ways, in ways we cannot comprehend, but God is always at work. Here is the thing. In order for God to get a person's attention, especially when you don't see your need for him, he has to allow you to hate bottom low, <laughs> okay? To the point where you have nowhere else to go, nowhere else to look, no one else to trust but him. That is significant. That is a blessing in disguise. I myself went through that before I became a Christian. One of the things that happened to me is that I realized relationship didn't work. Friends didn't work. Alcohol didn't work. Running around, doing everything that was sinful and wicked and none of it worked. I began to realize there had to be more to life. And that was one of the ways that God got my attention. Now, I'm not going to make this about myself. This could be another video about my testimony. But I prayed to the Lord, though. I prayed to the Lord a little bit after I was saved. I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, why did you save me? How did you manage to do it? And this was the text God showed me in the scripture. It's found in Psalms 18, verse 16. The Bible says, he sent from above and took me and drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me for they were too strong for me. I thought about that. I said, wow, this is the experience that God takes us through in order to get our attention. And let's go back to Oliver Anthony. Sometime just saying God might be using the negative things in your life, the pains and the sorrows and the disease and the sickness, because he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to save you. I feel like God's working through inadvertently through certain people to get to get his point across. Um, so take me to what what you did. Did you start reading the Bible? Like what did you do? I just changed my perspective. Um, you changed. You, you, I quit like, worrying about me and I started worrying about what what it is that I'm supposed to do. You know, like it talks in the Bible about um, about being a servant and you know giving up. I guess my desire and my will and whatever it is that I, that I want to do, like, um, I don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it's about, it's about trying to use what I have as a tool versus doing what I can in the moment to give what, give myself whatever satisfaction that it is I'm trying to get, you know, it's about letting, trying to let go of your ego, I guess, in a way. Um, Mm. and I mean, people, people pursue that mentality without, faith i mean it's the idea of there being something bigger than you but i think inherently all human beings idolize something like it talks in the bible about false idols we all have false idols like whether it's our phone or it's a celebrity or it's something we do or it's our addiction to food or drugs or whatever but like it's very difficult for a human to be the biggest thing on their hierarchy there's always something above us right because we're always in pursuit of something bigger than whatever it is in that moment and I think for me, it was just about taking everything else, all the distractions and all the other things in my life away and just ensuring that at least, and look, I'm st- 
it, we're all we're all we all sin and we all do stupid things. Like we're all just people. Nobody's special or righteous. People sometimes act like they're special and righteous, but we're all just the same thing. Like, um, but it's just about trying to make that make that my idol. Make 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 God and the concept of what it is that He wants done on this earth my idol versus anything else. Yeah. So good, so good, so good. Oliver Anthony is actually bringing Joe to the gospel without preaching the gospel. In a sense, he is, but he's not opening scripture and none of that, at least not yet. But that is beautiful. A man like Joe Rogan needs to hear testimonies. This is important because you got to understand something. Scripture won't convince a man like Joe, right? Uh, the only way a man like Joe Rogan the only way a man like Joe Rogan could ever come to a place where he would listen to the voice of God and even consider the possibilities of God, trusting and believing in his God, is that he has to hear what God has done in the life of other people. And that will, um, will I say, inspire faith in his heart. Look what the Bible says. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We got to share about what God has done for us. And this is what Oliver Anthony is doing here. It's not so much preaching, but he is preaching. <laughs> He's not so much uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, expostulate, uh, pontificate, shall I say. But in a sense, he kind of is, but he's using his life as a testimony of what God could do for Joe Rogan as well. And the other thing that is very uh, outstanding in this discussion, and I'm going to go back to it to bring this thing to an end, is that... Oliver Anthony is very poised and very calm about this, which is also speaking very loud to Joe as well about the power of God to deliver and bring about change in the hearts of the man. Is that Oliver Anthony is destroying the idea of pride and ego in the heart of Joe, Joe Rogan through his testimony. Here is the thing that stands in our way all the time as human beings. Let me share the scripture with you in the book of Revelation chapter 3. And this is talking about the Laodicea. Laodicea, the church in judgment. What is that church in judgment? It is us today, the human condition today. You can even say the final church. But that will be another Bible study. What is the problem with Laodicea? Laodicea is lukewarm. The issue with lukewarmness is that it is neither cold nor hot. So it's in a position where he loves the Lord but he hates the Lord. He wants to do God's will. He goes back from doing God's will. Sounds like all of us, doesn't it? Let's move on. God doesn't like that very much. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because why? I am rich and increased with good. So Laodicea say to herself or the people or we say to ourselves, I'm rich and increased with good. I have need of nothing. So we think we're good. We think we are good and pious and holy and righteous. And this is the issue with human heart right now is the issue is that we think we are so good, so holy, so pious, so righteous, so deserving. And we are setting up ourselves for serious trouble <laughs> because in reality, God says, you do not know that you are wretched miserable, poor, blind, and naked. He's not lying when he says that. That's exactly what it is. And by the way, this is the condition of people in the church as well. Don't think the world is in this condition. The church is in condition. As a matter of fact, Laodicea is supposed to be a church, a literal church, but also has a spiritual component attached to it. And God says, you need to buy of me gold purified in the fire. And the idea of this gold, when you find what it says is gold tried in the fire represents faith. So the Laodicea is in need of faith. She's also in need of right raiment. That means she has her own righteousness. She needs Christ's righteousness. And third, Laodicea is naked, so she needs to be covered. And her eyes, she cannot see. Annoy your eyes with eye cells that you may see. She's blind to her own condition. And guess what? The same is true for humanity today. Some of us, we are blind to our own condition. We are, uh, we are deceived by our own self-righteousness. And third, we have no faith in the Lord. Don't we need help today? I think we do. Let's go back to the video. You know, like we all serve, we all serve some master, whether we realize it or not. So why not let it be the master that is above all? And so when you made this transformation in your mind, did you then start reading scripture like regularly? Like what did you start doing? Yeah, well, that was different. Well, what's what really I guess it's like now I don't read it. I don't read it cuz I feel like I should read it to be a better person. It's like now I I try to read it for the guidance within it. And I'm still in the infancy stages of a lot of this. Like I've read 
a lot of Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, and Luke, and um, there's other good books, but just trying to, I don't know, like trying to restructure, I guess, on a granular level, like I guess the neural pathways in my brain that have certain habits and certain ways of thought, like I've tried to retrain that to, um, you know, like there's there's things it says, like, uh, and I'll be very brief with this, I promise, but like one thing, ironically, it's... Uh, Proverbs 420, which I thought you would like. <laughs> so if there's anything better. Perfect. But, Read um, it. Preach. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. But um, That's pretty fucking profound. But the whole book of Proverbs is like that. Like, it's not preachy. It's not, it's not what you think. Like, it's, it's like, it's good guidance. It's like good guidance that you would want a father to give to his son. Well done. <laughs> I love your Anthony, Jess not only share his testimony he shared the power of the gospel he dethroned pride and ego from the human heart and arrogance and not only that he lifted up god's willingness to work in men and secondly in men and lastly is god's um overarching theme of keeping us safe or his goal in, in keeping us in a path of righteousness for his name sake shall i say is this idea of abiding in the Lord. And I want to sh bring this video by saying this. First of all, Joe Rogan is amazing. He's a great listener. And I think that's probably why people listen to Joe Rogan is he's not distracting you, disturbing you, even though you're bringing something dis di different to the table. He's open-minded. He's willing to hear what you have to say, even though he might disagree with you. But to hear him sit there, to watch him sit there and listen to Oliver Anthony this whole time, not distracting the man, respecting the man's perspective i i, I actually really i give joe rogan a lot of respect for doing that because there's a lot of people on the news as well they don't know how to keep quiet when somebody is talking they're always distracting they feel like it's their duty to correct somebody's way of thinking but not so with joe rogan he has the humility to actually listen and i give him some godly respect for that here is the thing what all of Anthony just shared here is not only the, the, the gospel, but to Joe Rogan, but he's also giving, is, is breathing life and hope and faith in the heart of Joe. He says, abide with me, abide in me and I in you as the father cannot bring, bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. How do I do this abiding in God? Listen to what it says in, in Jesus. I am the vine, you are the branches, and he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do how many things? Nothing. Abide in me. And he said, he die about if not in me, he's cast forth out a branch and is withered and men gathereth it and cast them into the fire and they are burned. But here's the thing. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. This is crucial. How do I get to abide in Jesus so that Jesus abides in my heart? It's as I abide in the word of God, meaning reading the scripture with an open heart to do the will of God. I didn't just say read the Bible because a lot of people are reading the Bible today just to find out what's wrong with the Bible and therefore Satan becomes their teacher. You can read the Bible with the wrong motive, but when you read the scripture with a God-centered motive, with a desire to obey and follow his will, to get to know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Bible says that the Lord himself will be your guide. He will abide in you. He will live in you. He will walk in you. He will abide and sustain you by the power of his love. As the Father have loved me, Jesus says, um, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. There it is. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Continue ye in my word. So the more you read scripture, and you, uh, you massage your heart with the truth of God's word, he will sustain and keep you. Oliver Anthony done preached that gospel. This was beautiful, amazing, well said, well done. And my heart is happy. I'm happy for Joe, he's going places.
The Lord loves this man. He's been sending Christians after Christian to him. Whether Joe Rogan realizes it or not, God is trying to reach Joe. Four miles. Had for Just like he's trying out. to reach every one of us. As long as there is life, there is hope. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Share your thought and perspective with me. I'm going to put some videos on the side here. Make sure you go and check them out as well. Put some recommendations as well. Go to the channel. Go to the merch store and go to the and check out our merch and see what you can buy and just show some love and overwhelm this algorithm. YouTube is working against us, but I'm not worrying about them. God is stronger than men. Have a good one. Bye.